Welcome to De Lenda Est Cartago, a curmudgeons.net podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Andy. And I'm your other host, Aaron. We're here to cut through the clutter of some of today's headlines. This is the Seriously People, a picture cannot hurt you edition of the podcast. That air conditioner really is loud. Just calm down, all right? All right. So anyway, you're broadcasting from a third world country, New Jersey, so I understand the bandwidth is terrible. You have to have air conditioners that sound like jet engines. Yes, exactly. It's what we do. When you live in the armpit of America, <laughs> you do anything you can. New Jersey is the armpit of America? Yes, I believe so. I don't know about all of New Jersey. Well, actually, yes, all of New Jersey. Somehow from, uh, I don't know, somewhere in Connecticut, straight down all the way to Cape May, New Jersey. <laughs> so you could cut out part of South Jersey and just attach it to PA. Oh, certainly, yes. Or you could cut out almost all of it and just attach it to Delaware, and then Delaware might be big enough to be an actual state. <laughs> We don't want to be an actual state. It's no good can come from that. Well, I actually wish that Delaware was an actual, actual state state. A state state, Yeah, it yes. sure makes sense for them to be you know, smaller and not this giant thing where people on one side of the country don't have anything in common with people on the other <laughs> side of the country. What did I hear today? <clears throat> people are complaining about the – this is real – the escalator to people ratio in Wyoming and how ridiculous it, is, ridiculous it is that they have two senators when they don't have any escalators in the state or two escalators. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's so many things I don't care about in that statement. I don't know why you're talking about it on the radio. Oh, my goodness. Who was – who? Was, it was, of course it was on NPR. Oh, yes. Well, it is all things considered. <laughs> it's all useless and inane <laughs> things considered. <laughs> well, you know, got to do what you got to do. All right, so I beat you to it in the show notes here. Jerk. I, I, I've I've pasted a lovely picture of the Rolling Stone cover that's angering, infuriating many people. So since you obviously have some thoughts on this, you can go first. I'm a little upset that he has better hair than I do. That's the first thing <laughs> I noticed. Just this. slightly. <laughs> He has uh, a lot of hair. The amazing part here is that people are upset about this. <laughs> yes. This is like Rolling Stone, correct? Yeah, it's supposed to be an edgy, you know. They do crazy things like have a guy report on a general that's... <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> they did do that, they but... Do they that, but then they killed that guy, so it doesn't matter. Well, no, the, all of the reporters that were uh, reporting on the story, um, you know, with no bias, kept bringing up the fact that, yes, they did do that, but they didn't put his picture on the front cover on, oh, in that. Oh, oh. So it's okay. That's okay. different. So, wait a second. They did put his face on the cover. Didn't they put Petraeus on the cover? Uh, that wasn't Petraeus. That was oh no, uh, that's right. McChrystal. It was McChrystal. But didn't they put him on the cover? Uh, they said they didn't. I mean, they wouldn't lie. I, I can look it up real quick if mm. you want. Rolling yeah, Stone. Really no. They probably didn't because it probably wasn't big enough of a story. Jay Z had come out with a new single that week. So, who is Jay Z? Uh, I'm not sure, but he's married to a, lo a very popular uh, pop singer. I think. Uh, I, you know, when I type Rolling Stone, nothing comes up except this cover, even though I put McChrystal after it, so I, I can't tell you. All right, well, let's say they didn't, because it doesn't really matter. Now, I mean, it, it would be cool if they had him on there, because then they could have had, like, terrorists then and terrorists now. Right? <laughs> well, we know McChrystal is a terrorist. Oh, that's true. He's This guy's only an alleged He's only alleged. He hasn't actually been tried yet. Yeah. McChrystal openly, you know, says that he does these things, killing people. <laughs> That's very true. There's a, there's a difference. <laughs> there, you are absolutely correct. Some people, just, some people are ashamed of their terrorism, <laughs> or aren't terrorists at all. We may <laughs> well, never that's, know. That's possible too. Well, uh, it, but it he is... probably was anyway, because even if he wasn't an actual terrorist, terrorist, you know, he was a 
He was a Muslim. No, I'm just thinking he was a plant by the CIA or someone, and oh, so he thus did probably it, but... still an evil guy. Yeah, that's true. Employees of the CIA and NSA. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But I, I do want to say it is like I pointed out with Aaron Hernandez. He may be a scumbag, but he still hasn't been tried yet. Oh, he's innocent until proven guilty. Well, he should be. He's not, but he should be. He's not being treated that way, at least. Yeah, but uh, again, what uh, what authority does the public have? None. So, if he's innocent in our eyes, he's innocent. Yeah, that's true. Till he's guilty. <laughs> when when he's guilty. <laughs> So, I also noticed, <laughs> this is probably lame, but I did when I first saw this picture, I just glanced at it really quickly, and I thought, why is Marcus Mumford on the front cover of <laughs> Rolling Stone? No, you didn't. And he's, I did, I really did. It was a glance, and his face, uh, I mean, obviously he's got a lot more hair, but he looks like Marcus Mumford Very to me. similar, I mean, you're right, that's disturbing. See, I'm I thought, to... looking at the show notes, that you just had this giant crush on Marcus Mumford. <laughs> I thought you were finally going to come out and say, look, I have a man crush on Marcus Mumford. Well, I do, but that's different. That has nothing to do with this. Yeah, it's different, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find a picture that uh, had the same look and shape. Because his nose and his mouth and his, yeah, his stomach goatee like so. is like the same. Well, even the mustache. So, but I, so I have a new conspiracy theory. I think Mumford is Zokar Sarnayev. And vice versa? Have you ever seen them in the same room at the same time? Well, I don't know. Is it vice Oh, you're saying they're the same person. They're the same person. My word. It's possible. <laughs> How can you refute it? I mean... I'm pretty convinced that Garrison Keillor is uh, Kaiser Soze, so... <laughs> you could probably probably right about that, too. <laughs> We'll call Alex Jones and ask him. So, uh, why is this any worse than having Bob Dylan on the cover? Why is this... It, again, it's Rolling Stone. I mean, why is it different than having anyone so, ever? Um, any picture of anything on the cover of Rolling Stone? Well, here's here's my next question for you. Why is that bad, but Time Magazine can have... Uh, killers on their cover. Uh, let's see. What's the one I'm looking at now? I don't know. I can't see your screen. Can you turn the camera around? No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, this looks like it's Adam Lanza and somebody else. Maybe, I thought that was, was that Time cover. Oh, no, no, no. This Time cover. It's got the uh, guys from Columbine. Oh, uh, Eric Harrison. Yeah, no, Eric Harrison, Dylan Kleibold, right? Kleibold. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. So, uh, how come those guys can be on the cover of Time? Weren't they terrorists, perhaps? Uh, they weren't Muslims, though, were they? <laughs> I mean, that's true. Just saying what we're all thinking, right? Yeah, I like um, the uh, the even the cover shouts that though. The fell into radical Islam. How do you fall into <laughs> radical Islam exactly? Are you talking about the Columbine guys? No, or... no, I'm sorry. I'm back to the other thing. <laughs> Keep up. My goodness. I know. So it says, the bomber, how a popular promising student was failed by his family, fell into radical Islam, and became a monster. Yeah. He walked in one day, and his mom says, you totally get an F in family <laughs> life, all right? And you're converting to radical Islam. <laughs> well, no, that was after he fell down stunned by the news from his mother that he had failed family life. Oh. Maybe. It's he ridiculous. had failed them? What's that? They had failed. They failed him. Yeah, they failed him. Yeah. And he was popular and promising. Well, you know, if he really did what they're accusing him of doing, then he wasn't a failure to all of his family because his brother probably liked him. All right. Assuming his brother was in on it too. Well, right. But doesn't... Doesn't the that headline just beg the question, though? How does a popular, promising student all of a sudden fall into radical Islam? I mean, why does that happen? How does that happen? Well, my theory on this, and I'm going to get all serious here for a second. 
I think the real problem that we have with this cover and with those titles and things like that is that we maybe don't want to face up to the fact that it's really easy for the human, corrupt human being to fall, quote unquote, into all sorts of evil behavior. It could be any quote unquote religion or right. What does it matter which one he fell into? What what if it was uh, the Boy Scouts? How he fell into <laughs> radical Boy Scoutism <laughs> and became a monster. Right. The, the point is that we have this. Okay, guilty or not. We all have this nature. We're all going to fall into behaviors that are unacceptable, not well, morally unacceptable. Mm-hmm. And I think that people don't like this cover because it makes them realize, hey, he, this kid was a nice guy that everybody liked him. And just like that, suddenly he's evil. Well, it's either, you know, our theory that the guy probably really didn't do it or you have to come to was, face the facts that he was a nice guy and everybody liked him mm -hmm. yet he wanted to kill people yeah he doesn't fit the image uh of the guy with the turban you right, know exactly. wearing, wearing this sheet you know holding an ak-47 he looks cool he looks this is he a looks problem like problem for the media he looks that's the problem is he looks like he belongs on the cover of rolling yes Stone. he does yeah he looks yeah. like the the next uh, the next next uh, emerging uh, indie artist. Yeah, their problem is not that his picture is on the cover; it's that this picture is on the cover. Yeah. If they had chosen uh, one from the the cameras, you know, on the Boston streets of him yeah, with the baseball yeah. cap on, yep. no no problem. Yep. Absolutely. I do think that Rolling Stone has a problem though. I think they're more they're a little too concerned about having writers write for them who are looking for the actual story. They're supposed to be doing these fluff pieces that say exactly what the public wants to hear. <laughs> Somehow they've gotten a little off track there. Now now I know this is uh well, I guess it fits right in with how we do this show. Uh, maybe we should read the article and then we can comment oh, on it the next time. I would do that. <laughs> I actually that whole, can't do that. that whole my reason. computer has given up on me. Uh, I know because your video has been frozen for like four minutes now. Yeah, I know. that's okay though. I I like the ventriloquist, Aaron. It's yeah. It's well, it's better than looking at me. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we we still have your picture, but you look like this. I look like what? I can't see your video either. Oh, you! Oh, your video is <laughs> it doesn't matter. Why don't we take a break while uh, Aaron reboots his internet connection from the third world of New Jersey, and we'll come by? Uh, we'll come right back with the next segment. All right, give me a minute. All right, what are we on to next? Well. This next one, so if you'll remember, I wrote a blog post a week ago or so about uh, popular science. How they keep sending me emails even though I canceled my subscription. <laughs> yes, yes. And that one was about uh, what if the uh, what if they had drones during the Civil War, and more people would have died. Faster. There's one answer. The only interesting part of that was uh, one of the guys that they interviewed actually said. Um, oh, that's right. You blocked this. There, yeah, yeah, there's I no forgot. such thing as a surgical drone strike, Yeah, you know, no matter what the government says. Yep. Uh, so I got another one today, <laughs> and the title of it is, from Popular Science, How to Argue with the Anti-Vaccine Crazies, a Guide. So I had to click on it. I like the subtitle. In honor of Jenny <laughs> McCarthy's new seat at The View. Yes. So uh, what's her name? The... The one woman that is the the only quote unquote conservative one they have. Oh yes, uh, left, and she's going to Fox News, I think. So they had to fill her seat, and apparently they got Jenny McCarthy. And Jenny McCarthy has been anti-vaccine for a long time. Yes, um, is she the new conservative though? That's pretty funny. Yeah, right? I like that actually. Uh, well, uh, they were probably glad to get rid of that other woman. You think? <laughs> 
and just happy to fill her with anybody else. Fill that seat with anybody else. <laughs> so uh, I'm obviously not going to read the whole this thing. This is here, exactly but... how I think all conversations about the view should go. You know that other woman and the woman <laughs> who was the the woman that they didn't like. That's exactly tell... what the view is about. I'm pretty sure. I... I couldn't tell you any of the people that are on there. I know it's a show on TV, wait, and it's just women. Wait, wait, wait. Whoopi Goldberg. I could t- I could have told you Whoopi yes. Goldberg. I could not tell you any of no. the other women. No. I couldn't care less either. Oh, I don't care, yeah. So, this, art- this article, quote-unquote, is about how... <laughs> it is really a guide. It's supposedly uh, giving you these these uh questions that people ask about vaccines and your, your the claims as it calls them and then the real answer the truth about vaccines and i'll just read the questions i won't read the the answers but uh i like first that the title calls people that que- even question mildly that vaccines or not even vaccines but how vaccines are administered are crazies that's a good one and then right below the headline there's a picture of an infant, a, a little black baby, getting a, a vaccine in 1977 Georgia, and I guess by a white nurse. I, I don't know what image or picture we're supposed to get out of that, but why would you choose this picture of all pictures that you could put? I don't on know. There? I'm looking for an angle to it, and I. Well, I suspect them already because. <laughs> It's popular science, so. Well, yeah, I mean, it almost feels like let's let's go the race angle. Hey, White nurse, but, but like it can't be because an- that wouldn't fit their dogma. Well, I, I don't know. It, it could be saying if you're anti-vaccine, you're anti-minority because you know. Oh, because this mother cares about her child. This mother cares about her child, mm-hmm. and the diseases affect minorities, and I, I don't know. It could be just convoluted, but anyway. So you know what's interesting the... about this, though? Nurses dressed a lot better back then. <laughs> She's not wearing scrubs. Exactly, <laughs> yes. So, the first one is claim. Historically, recommended vaccines have been shown to harm children. Why would today's recommendations be any different? And actually, they say, yes, some older vaccines did have severe side effects... Uh, like they gave people the diseases that they were trying to prevent, but you know it's different now. Yes, it's no one. It's not. That? No it's one not the same gotten... government. It's not the same <laughs> FDA. It's not. These aren't the vaccines you're looking for. Exactly. No one has gotten polio from the newer polio vaccine. <laughs> now, by newer, the date on here is two thousand. <laughs> Like this isn't like 1930, right? We were get, we were killing people with those vaccines in 1930, but now we've got it down. Before 2000, people were given live polio vaccine that caused problems. So we're just supposed to take it on faith that in the past 13 years they figured it all out now. But anyway, we'll continue. The next claim is it's dangerous for little babies to get so many vaccines at one time. The immune system can get overwhelmed. Okay. Uh, apparently that's not true, according to popular science, even though, hilariously, in the comments of this, virtually every comment is a parent saying, my child got multiple vaccines and now has some problem. Exactly. Or showed a, yeah. a problem right yeah. after it. Uh, but they have four links to studies that have found no link between getting the quote-unquote recommended schedule of vaccines and getting diseases later in childhood. So, though immature, baby systems are prepared to handle vaccine. Exactly, they were born to get shots like that. Oh, uh, I mean, they already handled numerous vi- viruses and bacteria all around them in everyday life. Wait, especially second. when they, <laughs> if they if they can handle that, why do we have to give vaccines for each normal and everything they, on Earth? They said normal, not the ones we're giving them vaccines for. Oh, let's see. No, they, you have to keep up. No, they didn't say normal. They said numerous. Numerous. All right. Well, you know, I, I'm i not defending them. Uh, next claim, vaccines have dangerous ingredients in them. And this, of course, is about thimerosal, which supposedly is no longer put into vaccines. There's no date on this, but I'm pretty sure it was recently, if it's even the case, that they took it out. Uh, I mean, like, 
five years, right? Oh, it's yeah, not very yeah, long. It's very recent, yes. So, uh, so 13 years ago, we were still putting live viruses in people. Five years ago, we were still putting mercury in people, but we got it all down. So yep. there's no need for you to worry. Uh, next claim is... Oh, wait, it's no, not... CHOP, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, <laughs> they, they have, have more a... information. They do. They are, they are not dangerous. That That's the last sentence of that claim. They are not dangerous. <laughs> These are not dangerous. Exactly. <laughs> claim. It's not like a parent's decision not to vaccinate his child harms other kids. I I had to read that like six times. <laughs> and I'm still not sure. Well, that's why it's, it's such a dastardly claim, because it just confuses you. <laughs> I'm not sure it's grammatically correct. I'm not sure it's a sentence. There are at least two apostrophes. Why are there... Oh my God. It's not like it's not a like parent's... A parent's decision. Decision. Oh, a parent's is supposed to be emphasized. It's not like a parent's decision right. not to vaccinate his child harms other kids. I, I need italics on parents, I think. Something. So, this is well, saying... you know, actually, if your friend Melissa had her <laughs> way, then we wouldn't have to worry about this anyway, because it w- truly wouldn't be a parent's decision. Oh, good point. That's that's what they really want to say here. Yes, exactly. We, we really want mandatory. Give us your kids. You can't do it. And we're ticked off that we can't demand that 100 percent of children be vaccinated. The scientific community has the worst progressivism of anyone. They they do. They really do. Well, and, and let me pause here. And speaking of scientific community, oh no. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. It doesn't matter what you think of this guy, Andrew Wakefield. Uh, he's the British uh, surgeon and medical researcher who's, I don't want to say he started it, but he wrote, he had a research paper in, I think, 1998 talking about how the MMR vaccine seemed to be linked to autism and bowel disease. And he was totally, uh, you know, blasted by all of the interested parties yes right and i don't know uh if he lost i think he lost his medical license oh yeah yeah i'm pretty sure all kinds of stuff right he was later i I wouldn't say he was exonerated later but later different panels and judges found that he had not falsified anything and you know uh, whether or not he did good the studies were good or whatever he wasn't making things up right yeah he was the uh reverse hockey stick yeah (laughs) So, but but what's interesting about him is, to this day, he can't even get, like, an interview, uh, or if he does, it's like one of those, um, what's the short white-haired dude on CNN? Wolf Blitzer? No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I wasn't specific enough. You can tell that, Young, you can tell that 1992 younger. was the last time that I watched <laughs> CNN. CNN. Oh, what is that guy's name? Anderson Cooper. Oh, that guy. Anderson Cooper interviewed him uh, a few years ago, but it was like via Skype and his picture was like this big in the window and it was like all blurry and you couldn't hear him. And it was just Anderson Cooper yelling at him for like 20 minutes. (laughs) That's the level that he's allowed to to speak about these kind of things. But. So uh, Andrew Wakefield. Still the Wikipedia page for him, even though he it was proven that he didn't commit fraud still says known for his fraudulent research well right? not only that but it and blames him for everything him. else on earth it blames him for everything and i would bet you i should try this if i change this wikipedia page it will get changed back or if i if i even click question on one of these it'll go away yeah it's amazing the the hold these people have on on this kind of stuff so anyway i just thought that was that was interesting that uh the science, you're right, the progressivism in scientists. Anyone questions anything. I guess the other point well, about that's him what they, was... That's what they tried to do with the whole global warming thing. I mean, it's it's yeah. time after time after time. They have the same behaviors. Everyone sees this, and yet still we go clamoring back to the science guys for all the answers. Tell us the truth, yeah. yeah. So the other interesting thing about him is, he, uh, if I remember correctly, and I haven't read his book, but he didn't actually claim or say that he didn't want children to be vaccinated. He said, when you give them these vaccinations all together at the same time, it it can cause problems, right? That's what his his research said. 
And well, I'm, I'm pretty sure he said he thought it would be a good idea to try giving them, you know, maybe a few months apart or or farther apart and see what happened. And, but that they totally took that and twisted it to make it him say you shouldn't vaccinate your children. Right. That's a that's a different discussion. But he didn't even say that. Right. Well, look, listen to this. This evil comment from him. This is a quote from him. Urgent further research is needed to determine whether MMR, which is measles, mumps, and rubella vaccination, may give rise to this complication in a small number of people. That is... I guess, Why? We should have taken wait, him wait, up, wait, him up. It gets worse. If you give three viruses together, three live viruses, then you potentially increase the risk of an adverse event occurring, particularly when one of those viruses influences the immune system in the way that measles does. Wild, crazy speculation, and just reckless so behavior from if, a medical if we, professional. We sum it up: a researcher saying we should do more research, and he is disbarred <laughs> from the medical <laughs> community. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, this is what you get with uh, professions that are tightly controlled by the government. Oh, I forgot to mention one other horrible thing he did. He actually said that parents should just get single jabs for measles, mumps, and rubella, and that they should be separated by a year. That's because terrible. that's crazy. Yes, it is crazy. I mean, they could die of all three of those in that year if they don't get that shot on the same day. Happened to me. <laughs> You're actually a zombie, yes. right? Yeah. I thought I've been crazy. accused of that. Well, that's all I had to say about that, but it just uh, continues. So I did do a little bit of research on popular science. I didn't come up with a smoking gun uh, other than they got bought. Uh, they were owned by Time. They got bought sometime in the mid-2000s, 2005 or something, by a Swedish company, Swedish publishing company. I'm just trying to remember back, but I think that's right around when I noticed this huge shift mm -hmm. from science to propaganda. So I, you know, I, I, I haven't been able to pinpoint, you know, people, certain people, but uh, it seems like to me, that's what happened to popular science. It used to be a good magazine, but now it's just filled with crap like this and, you know, war machines and, you know, anything the government would, if, if you would think, the government would write a propaganda piece about something, it'll be in popular science. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I may have to try popular mechanics to see if they actually talk about mechanical things or if it's just more of the same. That doesn't seem likely. It's, it's probably <laughs> unlikely. They're owned by the same people. So. Uh, I'm thinking something more along the lines of, uh, isn't there a magazine Make? How did It's like do-it-yourself everything. It's probably owned by the same people. Yeah, but still, I mean, how much can you skew that? At least they want to do things on their own. We'll see. Good point. All right, that's all I had to say about that. Thank you for listening. You can find us at our website, curmudgeons.net, and on Facebook and Twitter, both at slash curmudgeonsnet. Drop us a note with suggestions, links, or show ideas, and remember to share the podcast with your friends. We'll be back in two weeks. When Aaron is failed by his family, falls into radical Catholicism, and becomes a monster, the B-A-T-F-E-B will finally put him where he belongs, and Rolling Stone will not put him on the cover. Until then, spit on your hands and hoist the black flag.